What is going on? Welcome to episode one of the Talk and Chop podcast. My name is Kevin, and I am a Braves fan. We are all Braves fans, and uh, we just kind of wanted to talk some baseball. You guys want to introduce yourselves real quick? Sure. My name is Ty. Uh, yeah, calling in from Atlanta, and uh, happy to be here today. Looking forward to uh, getting this show on the road. Yeah, I'm Steven. Uh, we're homies. We all know each other from Atlanta. I'm originally from Kansas, but spent a lot of time in ATL and uh, was living in the Battery for a minute. Now I'm in fucking South America. But <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take a more like behind the scenes approach to this whole thing. We're gonna have some other people on here, um, but I look forward to to really putting these boys like opinions out. And um, making them known because I think these guys are smart as fuck, and uh, we're gonna, you know, you're gonna learn that. Yeah, we uh, we have a, a big WhatsApp group chat going on, and so we're always uh, kind of shooting the shit and making jokes, and also having like good good baseball conversations. And we thought it'd be fun to just kind of put them out on the interwebs and and kind of see what happens. So, um, week one, the Braves season, I guess week one and a half now. We're we're what six and three. We just finished the uh, the Monday night game versus the Mets. Kind of a disappointing loss there, but uh, loss. still a good game yeah, overall. Sure. Can't count those Braves out, man. I thought we were going to pull out another comeback victory there, but, um, but yeah. Do you guys have any uh, any takeaways from the uh, the first week? I I don't watch a ton of other ba- other other teams, but I mean this team picked up right where they left off, right? Like um, obviously the end of last year was a disappointment, um, but this team stacked. Like this lineup is so much fun to watch every night. The bullpen dominant. Um, and, you know, we'll see, obviously, disappointing, uh, you know, what's going on with Spencer Strider. Fingers crossed that it's a, um, you know, it doesn't require surgery. But, yeah, I mean, the, they've got a ton of arms stacked with the minors. I mean, this team, like I said, don't watch every other team in baseball. But, like, I have a hard time going to that team there. Um, but we'll see how it all plays out. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I think, I think pitching last year, like, because, like, halfway through the year, we lost Max for a while. Uh, we had Elder as our number five, and like our, our team pitching ERA was like four and a half or something like that. Yet we were still winning almost every single game. And oh. this year, I think pitching is going to be a really big strength. Even though, you know what? What's crazy is that we've had two starts from Strider and yeah. Max, and they've both been terrible. Yet we won all of those games. Well, and, and we're still you six also years. said the the older guys, Kevin. You said like Charlie Morton and Chris Sale. They're the guys who are kind of performing the best or at least like producing I don't know how do you really quantify it but like my my biggest takeaway I think from week one is that we're six and two and that Ronald hasn't really done anything yeah yeah Yeah, um the lineup is definitely stacked as Ty said but like for me I don't know I've got like a bunch of people I could pick as far as being a fan of this lineup and I'm not really sure like where it lands for my fandom on the on the starting rotation i'm a big fan of the bullpen they've been you know completely just like lights out and competing and that's a little bit of a difference from you know last year's bullpen or even two years ago um this bullpen though is going to be deep for like the like you know i think there's guys who are able to have slumps the the starting pitching is in this first week with strata going down a little bit concerning that's my that's my takeaway yeah 100 yeah. percent. um but i mean like we don't need chris sale to be like you know 2012 to 2016 chris sale like if he if he can make 20 to 25 starts with a three and a half era same with charlie like he's 40 now so like if he makes it through the season healthy and is even 80 percent of you know prime charlie like we're, i think we're gonna be fine and we've got you know Nobody wants to hear this, but we've got Elder down there. We've got Winans. We've got Vines. We've got AJ Smith Shalver, who actually just got shelled the other day. Um, you know, and a lot of people forget about Ian Anderson and Waskari Noah. Waldrip, too, man. That Waldrip, kid. actually, he took a comebacker off the hand and then got shelled for like two innings oh, that's uh, right. like that this weekend. Happened. But uh, I think, I, I don't think he was injured because uh, he kept pitching after that, from what I understand. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, the, the depth is insane. Um, there were like, <laughs> I think it was on opening day, like, you know, 
the Braves are so fortunate to have Spencer Strider opening day when teams like the Rockies have Kyle Freeland out there and he gave up like seven runs in the first three innings. No offense to Kyle <laughs> Freeland. You're a major league pitcher and everything. Right. I get it. But like, it's just on a different level. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, Max Reed's your ace now, right? Like if you just said that coming into the year, like a ton of these, a ton of teams would take that. I, it's a setback for sure. But um, like, honestly, like in the regular season, it's like, not really that concerned to me. I think this team's going to run away with the division again. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we'll see, but you know, it's baseball. You never know, but um, you know, obviously the postseason, right. Is, you know, when, when the margin of error shrinks, that's when it, when you, it could come back to bite us, but no, we'll see. So, Long go. Let me ask y'all this. So we had this conversation on the text group the other night. So when they put Strider on the 15 day IL, Rather than the you know sixty day or like he's definitely needs surgery right now, isn't that a little bit of a like okay you're saying there's a chance that he might be coming back? <laughs> I th I think it's more of a precautionary thing personally. Like maybe they let him sit for like a week and see how he feels. Um, and he also just went and saw another doctor today in Texas. And oh, that's so right. They we didn't haven't gotten actually, the results of that, huh? Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. They haven't come out publicly with that yet. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. But I think it's more of like maybe we'll rest it for a couple weeks and see what happens rather than like, oh, it's torn. We need to have surgery right now. Um, but what I well, think. Well, yes, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's not my point. It's like, okay, we don't necessarily know that we're going to just take him out for the rest of the year. Good point. We might have there. There might be some opportunity there. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big like hope for the best, but prepare for the worst kind of guy. And I'm kind of expecting not to see him pitch again this year. Just I'm just expecting it, just in case, you know. And if that's the case, then probably for the first half of next year too. Unfortunately, but prepare um, for the worst, expect for the best. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Hope but for yeah. the best, prepare for <laughs> um, the worst. Hope yeah. for the best. That's but yeah, I mean. and it just sucks, man, because he's such a cool kid and like he's so unique and he's so disciplined and like he's so focused on his health and like his mechanics and all this stuff. And there was all this hype around him coming back with this new curveball. And like, you know, he's he was projected to win the Cy Young. And then, you know, his second start, this happens. It's really unfortunate. And then obviously, yeah, Sean Murphy going down in game one, like the injury bugs already kind of getting to us. Um, you and I, we were talking about this tonight in the game tonight. It looked like Ronald was kind of like stretching a little weird, like rubbing his shoulder a little bit. Like, I hope he's good. That would, you know, obviously kind of explain a little bit of slow start that he's had, but I'm not worried about Ronald at all. Like he's the reigning MVP. I saw somebody, <laughs> we were thinking about doing a bit on this podcast where, uh, we like poke fun at like silly things that people say on the internet somebody said oh it's time to move ronald down in the lineup like, we are not moving ronald <laughs> down in the lineup like you're insane he is like the best leadoff hitter of all time arguably like you know as long as he keeps this up for you know a, a significant career but um yeah th this team is uh it's just stupid yeah. man like we joke about we, we love bucks, we love for sure what are you gonna say yeah, for sure i just said this lineup bucks and like I could see moving Ronnie down to like number two, maybe, but I think the point of Ronnie batting first is that he gets the most at bats of anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also been kind of evident, like when he was a young buck, like in 2020, 2021, he was hitting for power. And I, I don't, you guys are more like numbers guys and stats guys, but you know, like his MVP season last year, it seems like he was hitting a lot more for contact, just hitting missiles, line drives, yeah. not as yeah. many like bombs, but like the, even the homers that he was hitting were like line drives. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. 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 You know what's crazy about that? You remember the series in LA where he got married and hit number 30? Yeah. That was yeah. on, I think it was on like August 30th or 31st. He got 30 with a month left of the season and turned it on and hit 10 more bombs or 11 more bombs. He finished with 41. Yeah. So you in can turn the it last up for sure. Four weeks of the yeah. season. Yeah. And like you can you can tell like his at bats, he's putting up really good at bats. Even in the eighth or ninth inning tonight, he put up a really good at bat, took a walk. Yeah. But um, you can tell like he's seeing the ball well. He's just like a little bit late, it seems. And like he's Timing. getting under the ball, getting on top of the ball. He's just not really squaring it up. But like I'm not worried about him one bit. Yeah, me neither. He had zero, zero concern with Ronald. Yeah. He'll, he'll figure it out. No, yeah. me neither. And I think that kind of piggybacks on the point of these three losses that we have now where it's like we were in all of these games. Like I'm not even 
I'm not worried about the team we at all. We very easily could be nine and zero right now. Ten, ten and zero. <laughs> yeah. What are, I think we're seven and three now. After we're six tonight. and three, right? Six and three. Oh, uh, six and three. Yeah, yeah we could I be. We could right. be. We could be nine and zero. It's it's the way the ball bounces, and I think you know even more so in baseball than other sports. But there's 162 of them, and in other sports, there's way less. And I think uh, the Braves have shown like. We kind of control as much the way the ball bounces than any other team in any other sport. Like those losses are very, very close losses. That's what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, like the sure. uh the game three loss against the Phillies, for example, is a prime example of this. Bummer was in there possibly a little bit too long. I know a lot of people were saying, Oh, Snip blew this game or whatever, but you gotta think about the bullpen usage throughout that series. Pierce uh Pierce Johnson pitched Saturday and Friday, the two games before it. You know, uh, Jimenez had already pitched that game. Our other righty is Jesse Chavez. Do you want him coming in that spot? And then the other righty after that is uh, Iglesias. Like, you want to use Iglesias in the seventh inning? Like, come on. Like, he, like, you know, Snit only has certain things that he can work with, and he's a World Series champion. Like, he knows a lot more than we do. And yeah. uh, I'm going to trust him a lot more than my, you know, managerial, you know, suggestions from the couch. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't subscribe to all these fucking haters on Twitter talking about Snit has one more chance or some bullshit like that. <laughs> yeah. Snit is not going anywhere until he decides. 45 to... years in? Yeah. There was on. a. He's going into the Hall a... of Fame. Possibly. There's a bet out time. there. There are odds. Can we, do we want to do we want to make Coach... that a, a hot button topic of this pod? Like, do do you think that Brian Snicker deserves a Hall of Fame bid? Because I I, I put him in. I've uh, speculated or, or just, you know, tossed it out there. You know, what does Snit have to do to get in the Hall of Fame? And I'll, I'll say this. I did that without checking the other coaches that are in the Hall of Fame. He's way short on the total wins. There, there aren't many to begin with. And they've all got an, a uh, metric fuck ton of wins. So he would have to do. He's not been like a manager for a long time, but he's put right. in fucking 45 years in the in the bigs. Yeah. And that's what makes it an interesting discussion. I mean, if like. You know, let's just say we strike gold and go out there and win. You know, and this, let's just say, you know, go crazy here and say, okay, the Braves rings, win you know, three in, of right? the next four or something like that. Like, are you going to tell a guy that's got four rings and 10 division titles? Like, yeah, that guy's not a Hall of Fame coach. Like, who gives a shit how many regular season wins he's got? Right. Like, he, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it makes it an interesting discussion, but it would be, he would be the black sheep for sure. The rest of those guys have like thousands and thousands of wins more than he has. So yeah, because he's only been a manager. That, I think this is his seventh season. So a lot of those guys, like Dusty Baker, was on the broadcast <laughs> tonight. He's been five manager for division twenty-five titles years, or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Dusty Baker's Hall of Fame for his ballot. I mean, one hundred percent. And I, I honestly don't really know a ton about the managers who are in the Hall of Fame and like what kind of prerequisites or qualifications or you know achievements that they have. So I, I don't really know. Um, to me, being a Braves homer, I, I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Like, like if Ty said, if, if we go on some run and win like three of the next four or something like that, then then yeah. But I think as of right now, probably not. <laughs> um, Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe that is just a Braves homer take then. Yeah, possibly. And it's easy to do that when you're fans of a, of a specific team, you know. Well, and also, I don't think there's many guys who have been with the same organization for as long as he has been and that's finally true. got his shot, you know, and yeah, then like took – full advantage and like all the people in the clubhouse, not just the players, even like him and AA work. So they seem to have simpatico, right? Like they're on the same, I don't know, wavelength. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're homies for sure. uh, So hopefully, yeah, hopefully we do run off another two or three in the next four or five, six years. That'd be sick. Even more. He'll um, definitely be in the Braves hall of fame though. (laughs) Yeah. He could retire today. For sure. Braves hall of fame. For sure. Thousand percent. But um, cool. Um, yeah. So we kind of already talked about the pitching, the bullpen. We we kind of touched on it lightly in that Arizona series. Check this out: Four, fourteen point one innings pitched, zero uh, runs, zero runs, five <laughs> hits, and five walks. <laughs> yeah. It's nuts. It's ridiculous, ridiculous, dude. Yeah. The first game, t- me and you, Ty, we were at the game. Who's that was Strider's night? He, yeah, he went like four yeah. innings, so the bullpen had to cover five or six innings. And then the second night was Max, and he struggled. He made it through like four and a third, I think. And then so the bullpen had to cover like yeah. five, five plus innings. And then uh, yesterday in the day game, when we pulled out the late win, or actually that no, the the day what game yesterday was 
was more of a normal uh, Braves yeah. win, or we just kind of controlled the game from the beginning. But yeah, I mean, uh, if you're if you're Braves marketing team, you have to just go off the cuff and create a Jesse Chavez bobblehead, right? Like I don't know, yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's part of the promo calendar right now, but you got to give this guy bobblehead, man. It it has to be that like mannequin they used last year in the bullpen when he was injured, <laughs> and they yeah. you know they, did the run, they would like hold it up in the bullpen, flag like on him, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Dude, or or so like funny. Matic would come out and be like literally holding him up. <laughs> <laughs> His leg was fucked up. Yeah, like right after he went down. Yeah, Man, for like that injury. dude. That dude would have been an all star last year if Miggy didn't hit one off his shin. Yeah, he was incredible last year prior to the injury. Same thing with Dylan. What what happened with Dylan Lee last year? Like he it's wasn't... shoulder problems, I think. Okay, they were both exceptional. Like, and it seemed to kind of fly under the radar. But yeah, Chavez was unbelievably good last year. Um, yeah, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I I remember listening to it on a different podcast or something like in any other team besides the Braves he has like a six plus ERA but with the Braves he has like a 2.2 ERA it's insane yeah Yeah, there have been some pretty interesting like Instagram posts and stuff I know that you shared one with the group recently Kevin I saw the same one before you shared it and you know at some point we'll be able to like reshare those on this and like splice it in here real quick but it's it's phenomenal just like how it's just the difference between like how he pitches outside of Atlanta versus how he pitches for the mm-hmm. Braves. It's wild. And that kind of segues into something too, because uh, I sent something earlier today where, where Kelnick posted something on Instagram saying like, what a place referring to like tourist park yeah. Braves country and whatever. And he commented oh, yeah. something. He's like, Oh, it's, you know, out of this world. There's nothing better or something like that. Like You're gonna it, love it, sounds, it. Yeah. it sounds so cheesy, but like the, the like the the togetherness i know that's like their new celebration thing which is pretty cool it's like cheesy but like it's cool because like you can tell how much that they like they care about the team win like whenever chris sale does like post game interview he did one the other day and he all he does is give credit to trump for like calling a great game and like for yeah, yeah. uh Kelnick for making a great catch or something like that you know what i mean like they they don't really care about themselves um and it's really well, cool and bally's did a dope post where it was like that original post overlaid with the um, Chavez post with like the comments and stuff like they had kind of done some editing to it and like made it, you know, brought it into the light of their audience too. It was really cool. And they actually yeah, showed yeah. it on the Braves live pregame show earlier tonight, oh, really? just like oh, pointing that. out. Yeah. And there was a cool um, photo that Jared Kelnick, uh, he, he posted or his account posted like a huge family friend shot mm-hmm. Um, I think yeah. one of y'all might have sh- shared that on our group. I'm not sure if I saw that on our group or if I just saw it on the feed, but like on my Instagram. But dude, Kelnick had like 24 people at the game tonight. Yeah, yeah. where is he from? He's from Wisconsin, right? Yeah, yeah. So they were they were not local. This isn't like they were, yeah, no, they traveled. Party, you know, yeah, yeah, they were like they traveled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, pretty awesome. sure I ran into them in the battery on Friday. Uh, I saw. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, I saw like that on Friday. Three older people, like I don't know, probably in the fifties, sixties, probably his parents, grandparents, or something, all wearing Kelnick jerseys. And I saw two younger people around our age with Kelnick jerseys, and they turned around. They're like, "Where did they go?" Because they had like <laughs> wandered into a store or something. Nice. Yeah. The photo they had like signs and stuff like Kelnick Crew. It was like dope. Dude. Yeah, was so cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it seemed like they had a good time. We're treated well. Lo- love hearing stories about that. And just in general, it just seems like every player – I don't recall a single player that's, like, come here and uh, been pissy when they left or anything like that or anything bad. It's, I guess Dansby had, like, a minor, minor kind of corp, but whatever. But it seemed to be mostly with management. Didn't get the contract he wanted. But Yeah. I don't know. It seems Dan's like players really, legitimately – Really? Like, Hold on. Game. Time out. Rewind. Ten seconds. <laughs> Yeah. If anybody, I would have pegged that on Freddie. You're saying that Dansby wasn't okay with a contract that was offered to him? I thought, well, and I guess, all right. I don't think this is like a whole, yeah. this is like an episode, right? We don't need to get into this deeply. Yeah, this is all old news but, and stuff. But yeah, it is. Yeah, it is I, I got something news. to say on it, but well, go ahead. I was just going to, I was just going to toss out the idea that if, like, Freddie wanted to be a brave, he had ample, ample opportunity. 
especially with the contract that was offered to him, which was way more above average than what AA was putting out. And also on par with what California state tax brings you down to Mm -hmm. with Dansby, dude, we were not competing with Chicago. Like go get your money, kid. Like they didn't want him back. They didn't want him back. I mean, that's the reality. They offered him qualifying offer and that's it. Right. No, they made just, an offer. I, I think just, it was like five one hundred something like that. I think the offer is enough for like what you should earn. I think he just chose more money. Yeah, which is totally fine. It, by the way, yeah. I'm saying, dude, go get your fucking money, dude. I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. You know he, what I'm saying? I'm not. And his comments were like offhand, just kind of I don't know, playing to the Chicago crowd. It was really nothing. Oh, uh, you mean my... when he when he like signed with Chicago, he was like, this is always where I've wanted to be, kind of thing like that. Like well he said something about like big they're... deal in Chicago, yeah. kind of a deal in Atlanta. Yeah. Like okay. and well, one of the ones like, that really stuck out to me. Sorry, one of the ones I gotta I gotta mention he was after he got his first hit at Wrigley Field, <laughs> he was like, I've never been in an environment like that. Like, dude, you won a fucking World Series here. You hit a yeah. game tying home run in game what four or five of the World Series. And you're saying that that environment on opening day in Chicago on like a 82 win team you is better than the, in the World Series. Dude, to dap up fucking Doovy after he hit the grand slam in game one, baby. Or game six of like first inning of game six, like he was so hype. That's definitely incomparable to your first hit in Wrigley Field. I'm sorry. So, Dude. but you know, as, as a, as yeah. a under contract player making 177 million, you have to feed Play the tablets, crowd, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. It, yeah. It's probably shouldn't even brought it up. Like I, I got no problems with Dansby or like really anything. So he'll always be a brave dude. legend, but yeah, like, yeah, he'll yeah, have yeah. fun Maybe in Chicago. Maybe high dude. school, maybe like, you know, yeah. Vanderbilt, a little questionable, but like he had the ATL <laughs> jersey on at the parade. Bro. Yeah. Like I fucking love Dansby. Yeah. Same. Yeah. He's a good dude. Like I like the guy and everything, but um, my, my kind of take on the whole thing is one, I think if the lockout didn't happen with the Freddie Freeman contract, I think he'd still be, he would have been re-signed. Yeah. Yeah. Because they all just of that didn't talk to just, each other made yeah it made it weird and like the timing was off and then like once the lockout ended we had like two weeks until the season started or some shit uh they had like a delayed spring training i don't remember all the dates because it was like two years ago now but um yeah. i think i genuinely think that if there wasn't a lockout that year that he probably would have come back because yeah I and there's all that stuff that came out about his agent who wasn't like telling him the offers that the braves made i don't know if i believe all of that but well i don't know it doesn't matter. He's he's Here's, raking over there in LA, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Matt Here's Olson. what I would say too. I don't mean to interject like any bullshit into this, but my take on it, just from the organization to the player, is that like they were both playing coy and they weren't gonna be like the first one to call their ex kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that there was a slight influence of his wife wanting to go out west and start her whole like clothing company oh, I'm sure. whatever the fuck she's doing like being a social media influencer like <laughs> she's thinking LA is the bigger launch pad for that um which is totally fine and, and like you know they're kind of like from there-ish right like it's not like Dansby where Freddy. he was like from fucking Atlanta you know what I mean like yeah that was Freddy's a little bit more there. of a damn like yeah Freddie's right, from LA that's what I think I'm she's from Atlanta, though, right? Like, isn't that the story? I can't remember. I don't His know, wife but from Atlanta. I've heard from Dang. some like oh, I don't know, sort of locals who but, like yeah. know those people just like personally that she yeah. would rather raise their family and like have her own business opportunities out there, which is totally fine too. Like, yeah. it's a professional business development decision. It's not like a personal decision. It's not something that offends me. Um, but like Chipper said, right? Like free agency is about where you want to play. It's not about how much yeah. money you want to make. Like if you take the bag, then take the bag. Like and that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I got no yeah. feelings for either one of them, right? Like wishing both the best as long as, you know, they're not playing the Braves. Um, is what it Love, is. Dude, right? they brought us the a ring, baby. Yeah, dude, that for parade sure. was so sick. That whole yeah, was wild. That run was 2021, insane. man, was so insane, dude. <laughs> We were all there. Yeah. Ah, you got me into that game five, dude. Kevin, you and I were like in the in the park like every day. Yeah. I was living at the battery. We went to many games. 
That was that was yeah. I'll never forget that. I mean, yeah, thank dude, you, Dansby. Thank you, Freddie. Like, yeah, yeah for sure. They're, sure. Like I said, they'll always be brave legend, Braves legends. But yeah, uh, Matt Olson and Orlando Garcia are more than filling their shoes. Matt Olson hit fifty four bombs last year, and dude. got like fourth in MVP voting. Like what the, the fuck? most <laughs> undersung fifty four bombs in Major League history. Yeah. Yeah, I was really hoping for one tonight, man. That would have been big. He uh he had a rough night at the plate, that's for sure. But I'm I'm not worried about Olsen one bit. He's been hitting uh doubles off the wall and down the line, Oppo all season already. Yeah, he already got like four or five doubles. I think we're just yeah. I think we're waiting it for it to warm up just a little bit. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it was still uh I think earlier when I was out, like before the game started, I think it was like mid sixties. So it was probably like around sixty, um, or maybe a little chillier. Uh, there but yeah once it starts to warm up that ball's gonna start flying for sure and obviously once ronald gets locked in and everything like that i'm I'm not worried about this team one bit um yeah Dude, someone i do want to talk about though jared kelnick can my camera yeah. focus on my face please all right it is now yeah this dude kind of... this dude okay this this doesn't include his stats tonight which he had another rough night i think he i think he struck out like three times um but he also has reached base in every single game this season so far, including tonight. He took a walk. Including tonight, yeah. Yeah, so he's he's reached base in every single game so far. Uh, he is 11 for 19, so he's batting uh, 579. Small sample size, I know. Uh, three doubles, three RBIs, uh, had one caught stealing, two walks. Um, but I, I made a little post on my... Uh, my Twitter account, my parody Twitter account, if y'all don't know, the Nutsack, that's me. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that'll be, be pay, made more public. Um, but he has played a significant role in at least two of the Braves' wins so far. Um, more specifically, uh, let's see, which game? Is the two blooper? Arizona games. Yeah, that yeah, blooper. The, two oh, Arizona. Nice. Night, not, the home open. Right, right. Like right after yeah. right yep. past third base. And then the one on Saturday night, too, the second game. So in game one on the home opener, he pinch hits for Duval in the ninth, down by one with a runner on third, one out. He hits that game dying, that tying bloop double, um, which, you know, is a little bit lucky, a little bit bad fielding, you know, but baseball. Um, it kind of an impossible, ways. yeah, impossible to field it, though. Was, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was hitting lucky, the perfect lucky spot. Lucky for sure. Yeah. yeah but he, yeah. dude was busting ass and made it to second base on that. Um, oh, yeah. And that was a pretty close play. Pretty close play. Um, and then so that actually put the he tied it and then he would have been the winning run. And Michael Harris struck out, unfortunately, RC had grounded out, unfortunate baseball. But we tied the game in the bottom of the ninth. And then in the second game, and obviously we ended up coming back and winning. Uh Darno hit the the walk-off uh double there. But look, Pierce um, Johnson threw what 15 straight curveballs and, yeah. and he strike out the side. I don't know that I don't like, remember the top of that tenth was just like that never happened. It seems like we always Braves just stuck at that, but it didn't. It went, yeah. I guess Pierce Johnson might be our 10th inning guy. Great, just yeah. <laughs> yeah, ever since they added <laughs> that ghost runner yeah. on second and extra innings thing, Braves have uh, notoriously been not great at that, but they've been yeah. pretty good so far. Yeah, it's um, been happening yeah. lately. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, game two versus the Diamondbacks on Saturday night, he got a single in the third, he got a single in the sixth, set the table for Ronald both times, uh, which is his job right there. And I, I want to say, too, that him being in that nine hole in that order is nobody wants to face Ronald. So he's going to get pitches to hit, and that's going to do wonders for his confidence. That's probably why he's batting over 500 right now. Um, but uh, and well, then he let's comes be up. clear, that's also why Michael Harris got all of the fucking – strikes that he's been taking the past couple of years exactly he's been bad in the Harris has been on fire this year so far too well yeah. yeah so now he has the opportunity to move up into the six or seven because now we can throw kelnick into the nine yeah because we yep. know that michael harris has like the the uh confidence right because he's exactly. been hitting in front of ronald and you know just built up that like okay i can do this because what is michael harris he's like, 23 years star, old man like, he just turned 23 old? He just turned 20. Guy's a yeah. superstar, right? Like I am. Dude, yeah. He's gonna win an MVP but, at some point. Like it's career. obnoxious how like athletic that guy is, how much he hits for power. Like that guy. But, but, but like, all right. So I just heard to bring in another sport, like you know, some dudes on the Four Letter Network talking today about how Patrick Mahomes is. You know, he's Patrick Mahomes, but like the reason why he's Patrick Mahomes 
is because he got drafted by the Chiefs who had, you know, Alex Smith, who had like a winning organization and he was kind of able to like chill and then succeed when his number was called. That's kind of like what Michael Harris has just been through the past couple of years. And that's, I think, what we're trying to do. You know, Kelnick has an opportunity to come here. It's been well documented. He said himself, like, oh, my God, the pressure's off. I'm not in Oakland anymore. I'm suspe- expected to be like a standout. I'm in the nine hole, you know? Yeah. And he's shining. Yeah. He's working with sites, too, right? Like, his the – the the brave just like i i don't know how they do it right like it's a professional organization they're cheating bro yeah they must be i don't know i mean they must be i mean it's i thought side by side of Kelnick the other day from what he's doing in seattle to what what he's doing now and it's a night and day difference right yeah but at the play no you're good same thing (laughs) same thing um yeah, I no, was gonna okay. find out quickly that I'm not as as well versed in baseball. That's all, oh, dude. You still, yeah. you still you still talk the talk though, but um, but yeah, no. Obviously, he had a, he had a pretty rough spring training, and everybody was like writing him off, like, "Oh, this guy sucks. Why did we trade for him?" And this and that, and like, did yeah. You you can't just show up to spring training at a new team, and Sites isn't gonna go up to him right away and be like, "All right, you need to change this, 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 and this." You know what I mean? He's gonna give him a, a couple weeks. He's gonna let him do his thing, see how he works, because there's like. One thing that I've learned just from listening to other, you know, beat writers and stuff is they talk about the way like sites' approach is it's not like this is the right way to hit. It's like this is how your body moves and this is how your joints move and this would be the most optimal way for you to hit. And so he has to kind of get a feel for, you know, what he sees and what he can improve. And um, obviously we see that that paying off now. And even in the pa- in the last like two or three spring training games, he started making a lot better contact, striking out less. He hit that bomb in spring training. It was like 460 feet or something. <laughs> Dude's yeah. got power. If he if he yeah. you know makes contact, I'm still waiting for that first uh, home run as a brave. But I wanted really it so bad. I think I, yeah, I especially wanted against it. his old was team. Was he the eight? Yeah, that would have been. He, sick. he was drafted by the Mets. I don't know if he, he was a Met. Like, yeah, 2018 got traded to Seattle. Podcast. That was the Edwin Diaz trade. He's in the diet. Yeah, was trade. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that kid... yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Well, they said yeah. that they worked on his hands in spring training a little bit. Like I think yeah. I heard Chipper, who's kind of a you know ad hoc batting coach, who's on this on the staff essentially, saying like you know he's got the confidence, he's got the game. Like we're working on a couple of mechanics and techniques, but like you know it's there. And uh, I don't know, man. When when you don't have that pressure on you, I think that's a big deal. Yeah. Oh, hundred sure. percent. Yeah, because he, you know, obviously they have like J Rod out there and in Seattle and stuff like they got some some good players, but he was in the cleanup hole like yeah. all last year. <laughs> you know, like they he they weren't expecting him to be the guy, but like talk about putting a kid under pressure. And I think he's only this lineup, man. Like young too. He's like he's young. Over 25. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take and he's, take a team's be... cleanup hitter and put him in the nine hole. Like that's how they slot up. Like in the the Mariners are good. <laughs> yeah right exactly. like it's, yeah. it's nuts like it's just a testament to how deep this lineup is in this lineup my box so it's really it absurd yeah this lineup yeah. fucks for sure um speaking of kelnick though did you that he's got a damn cannon i was shocked that they, they what was the player with the at home tonight like i I didn't expect there to even be a throw, and he made it a play. I, it, you could class. tell in the booth, too, they were surprised as well. They're like, oh, that was, like, closer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And maybe Alonzo took a bad angle around third. I don't know, but I, I don't I don't care. That play should should not have been close. And, well, and when you – yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you think about – all right, so, like, I don't know. You guys, again, going to be more, like, baseball knowledgeable than me, but I feel like watching baseball as a – moderately maybe above average like viewer the sort of two like most replaceable or i shouldn't say replaceable but like defensive positions where they're more about well no let me read you hide again. left field, left field. Is yeah it's like it's where it's like used you to play. stick your fucking <laughs> yeah. worst and Eddie defender Rosario. out okay yeah um you hope that, you know, with a goal if they goal suck goal. at left field on defense and they can like hit right Yep. But you'll take a great defensive left fielder over, you know, like Snit said it himself. I think he said, like, if Kelnick hits 200, where everything else is great. 
But yeah. now we've got so now we've got Kelnick and Duval who we re-signed, which I told y'all like, dude, when those memes are going around about like Forrest Wall on the wall, I was like, dude, love to see him out there. Would also love to see Duval back. Now we've got all three of them, dude. We've got Duval, yeah. Wall, and Kelnick, and then a catcher, which I was kind of trying to wrap into this, but it's not you know equitable to <laughs> left field because you kind of have to have like a guy who not only catches the pitchers, but doesn't need to hit, but like, it's great if the catcher hits and we've got two catchers who can catch games and who can, and who can hit and who can like throw people out. Murphy's down, dude. Darno is getting in there. Trump, you know, he's been serviceable. Like you guys said, I don't know who's after Trump. So hopefully a little D doesn't go down, but like, man, this team has shown like AA has like really provided some depth at like these positions where you don't really like supposed to need them, but it's like so clutch to have it at. So Does much that depth. make sense? <clears throat> yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. And like, and I mean, not, always... not to, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, like, not to mention Duvall can play full, three other positions. Like, you can play center field, right field, you can play first base. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. I think you can play first too in a pinch. Yeah. And that's good because I think Riley was our emergency first baseman before that. Ozuna uh, can play first base, yeah. Ozuna, Marcel. yeah, he's been taking <laughs> reps at first base. Too. I forgot about that. We got some versatility on this lineup, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if Guillaume is ever going to get in the bat this season, right? Unless yeah, Ozzy goes crazy down. Crazy thing about wasn't he like starting for the Mets last year? Uh, he was still their bench guy. I'm pretty sure. Maybe maybe like a platoon bat, kind He'd of be... a platoon ish, like yeah. light platoon. Maybe I don't know. Okay. He definitely wasn't their everyday starter. Down. Sure. I got you. Okay. But the Mets have like a weird lineup, man, because Jeff McNeil will be at second and then he'll be yeah. in left field. And like, I don't know, fucking Brandon Nimmo tonight hitting two bombs with five RBIs, really. Dude, he's a Braves killer, bro. I hate Brandon I Nimmo. You know, is, how he runs to first base after a walk. God, I annoying hate thing. <laughs> I can hate the Mets. Also, in why are they not doing the chipper Frenchie Smoltz Clavin? broadcast sometime they will. this week oh this week for the mets yeah I don't mets, know. yeah that's what yeah, they know. always do it maybe they, they the, with their golf schedule probably because the mets suck well they just beat us well it maybe, was a weekend maybe, series it was a sunday last year right i think so maybe. Yeah. i think it was also closer to like clinching time well, I think they did two last year because the two. first yeah. one was when first one was early. thought the Mets were like still decent. I think that was in like May or June. And yeah. then we swept okay. them and we're like, oh, the Mets suck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, everything went downhill for the Mets after the whole Sal Licata, the, the NL East is over yeah. thing. E- ever since then, it's been all downhill from there. And it's just LOL. all downhill, dude. LOL Mets. They even got a new fucking billionaire owner who spent. I don't even know what their payroll is, but it's still probably top three or five in the league, and they suck. Oh, it's ass. number one by a lot, I think. Is it really? Is it still? Yeah. I know it was last year. Maybe well, not now. Still paying. The, the damn not Dodgers. after the Dodgers. Did. Well, I guess that's all deferred though. And they're still that's paying true. Verlander, and like they're still paying Verlander, and yeah, uh, people who don't even play for them. Yeah, <laughs> like they like the payrolls. I don't know. I, mean, I could be wrong. I don't. God, I'm dude, that about sucks. It. Yeah, sucks for them. Honestly, I, like. I've come across some good Mets folks on Twitter. Like the ones that were like the 2021, what year, 2022 season. Um, where, where they were good always, and then they collapsed. Yeah, where they were good and they collapsed. Or like, honestly, like they collapsed. Like we, the Braves had an amazing like final 75% of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be one of the more fun regular seasons I recall. Yeah. But anyhow, like I, I, most, yeah, a lot was... of fans that are still around or on Twitter are like, pretty chill, honestly. Um, yeah. Like, for him right yeah um, none of them are talking shit yeah. anymore because they don't have anything to talk shit about yeah, yeah that's, that's why you think that did they might yeah. be talking shit now you might be honest yes in game one yeah. but you saw that funny video where it was like some dude getting interviewed by a girl outside the stadium and it was like why are you Mets fan he was like i'm here every year for the disappointment <laughs> it's like <laughs> what what do you mean? He's like, I got no fucking hope, but I just love to get hurt. He's like, I'm ready to get hurt again. <laughs> it's like, what? Man, in hey, case you were wondering, Joey Bart signed with the Pirates. So no ties wish of uh, bringing the Georgia Tech guy back home to Atlanta. 
Oh, damn. Not going to come I true. think he actually, I think I saw that he actually hit a home run like in his first at bat with the Pirates. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, wow. so is it already played? <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I might be yeah. completely wrong, but I think I saw that yesterday. I watched uh, Fuzzy on YouTube. He uh, he does like MLB recaps every day. He does like a little two minute recap of every game, um, and I think I think that was part of it. Yeah, it looks so. I just googled him, and it looks like he had a two run single and a two run homer, or maybe maybe the two run single was tonight. But yeah, he's made a splash already in Pittsburgh. It's a little surprising. It was, he was with the Giants, right? It wasn't Oakland. I, I think so. Yeah, I think he was. So the, the franchise that produced Buster Posey like couldn't get anything out of a top five pick at catcher. Like, what the hell? What happened there? See that that yeah, kind of stuff is where my him. knowledge kind of uh, the draft Buster out. Posey. Yeah, I love sure. Buster Posey, dude. Yeah, you know what? That's a that's one of the weird players that like I have no allegiance to the team. But I fucking loved Buster Posey. You know who the other one was? Is Dustin Pedroia. For whatever yeah. reason, I just felt like he played like middle infield, and that's kind of what I did in like little league. And I, I think maybe he was like kind of an undersized guy, but just like didn't give a fuck. He's like super tough. I don't know. I think there might have even been some like steroids accusations against him, which I wouldn't condone. But for whatever reason, man, I didn't really have any other like. People, you know, outside of your fucking legends like King Griffey Jr., but like yeah, yeah. Pedroia, I was a big fan of, and Buster Olney too. They're just tough motherfuckers. Yeah, Buster Olney. Yeah, Posey taking Burr. a bunch of like, I mean Buster Posey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, not not the writer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Buster Olney though too. Shout out Buster Olney. <laughs> That's and he's also like kind of an Orioles guy, isn't he? It's like a Baltimore like. DC, Tri City, or Tri. I have no stuff. idea, to be honest with you. I think he is. SVP is definitely an Orioles guy. Oh, yeah. He's a big DC guy. Yeah. Like, and like old school yeah, DC. Yeah. yeah. So he still likes the Orioles. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's easier yeah, to like yeah. the Orioles nowadays. But yeah, he's, he's like. Dude, when I was, maybe it's because <laughs> when I was growing up, when I was like seven or eight years old, like before I even moved to Atlanta, when I was in Kansas, my uh, youth baseball team was the Orioles. Yeah, I, I just always love that to. fucking that logo, dude. That fucking orange and black bird on my hat. We had like the old school stirrups too. We didn't have like the sock stirrups. We had like real stirrups. real stirrups. Yeah, dude. That was tight. I did too at one point when I played little league. <laughs> I stopped playing <laughs> when I was like twelve. I was actually decent, but I got bored of it. I started playing lacrosse for some reason. Oh, nice. That's cool. And then yeah, I, I stopped. No, go ahead. I was going to say, then I just started playing guitar and smoking weed and joined a band <laughs> and quit. It kind of looks like dude, your mic stand <laughs> kind of looks like you're just rocking like a fat guitar, dude. Yeah, it does. <laughs> looks like you could, it looks what? like you could just like. <laughs> yeah, I do have a guitar like, right here, actually. It looks like you could put your left hand on the like. I don't even know what yeah, that is. Some right type of yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just like the. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. You should have like a little sound effect when you could, whenever you touch it to move it, it'll be like. Burr. I have a, I have a, a stream deck which has those like macro buttons. I could like program some nice sound little stuff. sample triggers. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, tight. <laughs> All right. Yo, dude, is that your us. office, Kevin? It is. Yeah. Dude, that's so much cooler than my office. That's okay. I make videos yeah. for a living, so I okay, mine has to be yeah, kind of cool. That background. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. We all got to get the, the no, microphone don't. like Kevin does. I mean, we don't this have is, to, but, you know, in order this to is, make this, like, good production quality, although, you guys, I think we've done this, like, pretty well so far tonight. Yeah. Um, um, I, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think really the main thing that we would need is just like some some decent mics. I mean, I think your audio sounds good, Steve. Uh, you bought that mic, Ty, already. It's it's on the, uh, yeah. in the Amazon, wherever it is, in the Amazon's warehouse and shipping department. But I think it looks fine, dude. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I don't think people here are, are too worried about it. I don't know. We'll see if we get any viewers on this first podcast. I'll be interested to listen back to this because I've never heard how my how this... This is like a pretty expensive set of headphones. I got them on sale, but they retail for like four hundred dollars. 
and I've I use them for work, but I've never actually heard myself like on a recording from them. Um, also, I got them like deeply on sale for like two hundred and twenty bucks. I don't think I would spend four hundred dollars on headphones unless I was kind of in the situation where I'm like traveling, and um, it just makes sense. Cause like you know, in storage, I have like a setup where I could get like a fucking yeah, you got microphone. And like plug myself into a board and like have a couple cameras if I needed to or whatever. But um, I, I'm totally looking forward to trying to make this like a good production quality value. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I wonder if there's a way. So like what I'm looking at right Anybody now. Anybody want to sponsor us? Yeah, right. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is, okay, so in Zoom, we've got this th- tri screen, like split screen, right? Mm-hmm. Doesn't Zoom shouldn't does Zoom know how to instead of like just highlighting the box of who is speaking in the yellow, making it like the forefront, like the the only screen that's showing? Yeah, yeah for it, sure. It's weird. So they have speaker view and gallery view. I, I'm recording in gallery view right now, so it th- shows all three of us. But if you go into speaker view, it's there's just like a little bit of a delay before it switches back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Um. So sometimes it makes editing weird um yeah if you're watching this we're kind of experimenting right now this is the first one we've done our, our, our production quality will improve as as the uh the episodes go on but um yeah we'll get all that stuff figured out and and we uh you know this has just been an idea that we've had for a while and we we're kind of like fuck it let's just do it and well and so- i want to my my point of bringing this whole fourth wall shit up is that like i think we've had a great enough conversation that we could like cut it to before I brought up these behind the scenes types of things. And I would kind of like if y'all are down and you have a couple more minutes to like go through some of this deck that I put together and talk about maybe some like strategy um, for, you know, a weekly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just more work in terms of uh, editing, going back and like cutting this out, you know, but. We just have to cut it off at a certain point. Yeah, we need to do like an outro though and say, hey, like, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? We can't just cut it off. Can't just leave them hanging. (laughs) Yeah, let's do an outro in (laughs) five, four, three, two. All right. Yo, so yeah, dude, that fucking, you know, the Braves, we're fine. What are we, six and three now? And, um, could be nine and oh. No, we'll, we'll, we'll take this series versus the Mets. If you told me. Really, really before this game, that first series against the the Phillies, the White Sox, and the Diamondbacks, if you told me before the first game against the Phillies that we're going to get through that six and two, I would take that any day. Oh, of the week. yeah. Dude, Hell six, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Especially and, uh, with Max not pitching well and Strider, yeah. like, let's not forget before, you know, and we didn't even know that he was like down and out for the count in his second start. He just like wasn't pitching very well. Yeah. But he also didn't pitch like amazing. In his he was pretty lights out in that first game until he gave up that homer to fucking Brandon Marsh. Yeah, who was good at yeah. baseball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but then I don't know. That's that's been kind of his mo a little, tiny bit. He's one of those want... random Braves killers. Yeah, he's... he's like Brandon yeah. Nemo, man. He's just kind of those mid baseball players, but somehow they show up big when they play us. Marsh, yeah, yeah. I, feel like, Darsh, feel, I feel like Segura used to be like the, like the stats like that. Now it seems like yeah, dude, Casillas has been a brave killer too, man. He's in the playoffs, yeah, yeah. He's so bad during the regular season and turns into fucking Barry Bonds when he plays us. Yeah, he playoffs. used to be on both sides of the ball. Fucking uh, Trevor Story for fucking the Rockies, dude. He used to be a yeah. Braves killer. Really, I, I don't. Remember. Trolling his ass like at every game that the Rockies came, and he was just like, I don't know. I felt like he looked at me and then hit like a bomb. It's like, <laughs> yeah, what happened you to see? Story, man? He used to be so good. He's hurt again. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, he's in fantasy. Boston. Yeah, no, that. he's not on my fantasy team. I don't think I'd be surprised if he's on any fantasy team. But he's oh. been hurt the entire time he's been in Boston. Yeah, dude, what is it with Boston Before and that? injuries, man? Him, Chris Sale. Uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I just hope Chris Sale stays healthy this year, man. If we get 25 starts out of him and he's healthy for October, he's going to be a weapon. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Dude, I it. feel like Chris Sale and Charlie Morton are going to be our fucking horses, bro. And because, yeah, they gotta be. and the reason I think is probably because 
they got into the game early enough where they're not, you know, putting that same stress on the UCL or whatever that these high velo guys are. I also yeah, hope yeah. that our bullpen guys are going to be fine because we just dealt for a bunch of high velo bullpen guys. Yeah, and, that's uh, true. That's a good point. You know, like yeah. keep them, uh, keep them lubed up, dude. Keep them healthy, man. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know enough about uh, you know, like pitching mechanics and stuff like that to really say definitively like what is going on this year. Uh, Frommer Valdez from the Astros it was announced today that he's got some elbow soreness and was scratched from today's game. So. Who knows what that means? And Max Fried had issues with his elbow last year. Was it his shoulder? I don't remember. Um, you know, his elbow or four. Yeah. It was forearm soreness, but they were concerned forearm. about that. If I remember, yeah, like, something like that. Well, but, uh, I'll throw this into the mix. There's, there's, you know, everyone's saying like, go get Trevor Bauer. Um, Trevor Bauer and a few other pitchers have been on the record in the past couple of years saying when they took away the sticky tack, when they took away, you know the rosin plus sunscreen, like when they made it really difficult for us to yep. use legal substances, like we got to grip harder. Like yeah. He was like, Glad now. you know, yeah, he was like, dude, I, I threw a, you know, a hundred pitches. And the next morning I woke up like, fuck, I didn't realize I had these muscles in my arm. Like they're all yeah. sore now. Yeah. yeah. So that's a big concern, man. Yeah. It yeah. Is for sure. Yeah. And I think like, Thanks, it, it's, yeah. Right. It's weird to think about how we didn't used to have this many pitching in injuries, you know, over the past 20, 30 years, but it seems like the past three, four, five years, it's just gotten way worse. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I don't think it's in the ball clock. and the changes in the, in the regulations of sticky stuff, man. Yeah. I don't think it's the pitch clock. I think and changes in the ball. And then everybody's throwing harder. I saw a graphic today. So it was like fastball, the lot average fastball, the lot. Fast I think ball I saw that same graphic yeah. by inning by year. So it was like a grid, if you could envision that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as you go up in years, like the first inning fastball is just like skyrocketed in average velocity. Mm -hmm. It's up from like low 90s to mid 90s. Yeah. Whereas on the back end of the innings, like six, seven, eight, nine, it hasn't really changed that much. Like relievers have been thrown hard for decades, right? But it's yeah. started going max effort all the time. That's got something to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> I also that. heard some other <laughs> shit on 680 today that I was talking about. They have like studies now that are saying that the UCL ligament doesn't, or that's redundant, whatever UC stands for, ligament doesn't fully develop until you're 26. And these kids are, you know, taught to yeah. throw these pitches when they're fucking in high school. Yeah. Even so younger. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these drills you see coming out of these like pitching, whatever the hell they're called, they're not camps, but these pitching factories right, flying like, or whatever it's called yeah i mean it i mean they're kids and they're like got them getting in this competition for how fast they can throw it but it's like not off a mound they're getting like a running start yeah they're doing like a crow hop pro hop and yeah yeah and right i don't know their fucking shoulders out yeah i don't know did you uh anybody see that that i i sent it in the group chat a few weeks ago when it came out but baseball doesn't exist there's a really good youtube channel on youtube that yeah, does like yeah. random little mini documentaries but they did one on japan where they basically say that baseball in japan is kind of like almost militaristic like starting at a really young age they practice like oh, yeah. all day they like they like wake up they go practice baseball they go to school they get out of school they go practice baseball like until it gets dark and um there's this one high school tournament that like everybody in japan wants to win and uh there is this one kid that they talked about that threw like 750 pitches over the span of like a week it's wild, like, man. that's insane but yeah. what's crazy is that you would think all the injuries would be absurd Wait, what are we talking kidding, about but now? they're not like, is this kid how old is this kid is he throwing fucking like high school 90s age. or what are we talking about I, I don't know the the specifics of it. I just remember hearing that in the uh in that um episode. But I mean he's high school age, so probably 16, 17, 18 years old, you know. Um I've seen but, some I've I've seen similar videos in I don't know if it was Japan or somewhere in Asia, but it's like basketball videos and there's like a thousand kids doing like crossover dribbles and they have like two balls even and they're like dribbling and crossing at the same time. And it's all in unison, dude. It's fucking wild. That sounds way cooler and less uh, stressful on your precious joints. <laughs> yeah. Throwing 100 yeah. miles an hour when you're 
14. <laughs> I think they probably all came to the same realization that I did, which is you can't be a professional basketball player unless you're like six three, six four at least. And it's the same thing with pitchers. You can't be a professional pitcher unless you're throwing at least 95. Like I was listening to the 755 Forever with DOB and uh, Erica Flaherty, and he was saying that like scouts won't even look at you unless you're throwing at least 93. Which yeah. is crazy because well, he—that's what he topped out at when he was looking them up. I guess, there. yeah, right, yeah. There's gotta be like that's that, that just blows my mind. This shit, dude. What yeah. did he top out at? Fucking ninety-seven, maybe. I don't know. He's Who? just locating Mad Dog. Oh yeah, was... yeah. He was never a velocity guy at all. No, well, this, um, the story with him is that he could throw. Like when he was coming up, he was throwing he it hard. Shows whenever he could, and then he like reconfigured how he pitched he had quote learned how to pitch and he took a bunch of velocity off and then he the rest is history right but yeah that's something they were talking about on the on that podcast too was like how not many pitchers can throw it like 80 percent and still be accurate unless you're greg maddox um oh, yeah. that's what he would do I mean, he yeah. wouldn't try to overpower him he would just hit his spots but he's also man, one of one though, i right? get it like, yeah. he's a hall yeah. of famer but it's possible i guess is what i'm saying I don't know. Yeah. There's got to be guys out there that can. I'm not saying like there's like another Greg Maddox, right? But they like, it's surprising to me that there's not a team. Like, it seems like there's hidden value out there that's just getting completely ignored, right? Well, like Bryce Elder. Yeah. Like the Bryce Elders of the world. Um, and, you know, set aside whatever you may think about his like long term, his outlook. But point being, right? Like, if Greg Maddox in the flesh was out there pitching today. This what I'm understanding is the scouts would ignore him. Right. So is it that's what it sounds like? Yeah. Right. So I, I don't know, man. Like I wonder how Greg like... Maddox would do in today's league. With everybody like with launch angle and exit velocity and all this shit. Everybody's trying to hit it to the moon. I wonder how he would do modern day baseball. That'd be interesting. I wonder if it would be <laughs> even better, dude. Yeah. Because people are willing to take K's, they're like, you know, as long as we just hit more home runs, like we're fine to strike out more, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's way less value on like, looking for ball fastballs. Yeah. Greg Maddox will. Did y'all see that video that I shared on the chat the other day with that dude? I forget the name of the pitcher, but he's wearing the like C or CCP. It's like a, some anyway. Yeah, some weird CCP. like Russian hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's guy's That's... like. This is how I threw this pitch. And he, like, describes how it gets hit to right field. He describes how it gets to left field. He describes how he strikes people out. And then he describes how, all right, this is the one that you can strike somebody out on. And he says, I don't have that. (laughs) He's like, like, or you could throw a fucking four-seamer. He's like, and I don't have that. (laughs) That's why I'm not in the bigs, you know? So funny, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy like how they can manipulate the ball like that. Like Chris Sale, man, I could never his be fucking a pitcher, slider. Yeah, Did you see that pitch uh, that uh, Christian Walker swung at? Would it hit him? Yes. Yeah. On Sunday. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's got to be like the most humiliating thing as a batter. It's like straight. <laughs> dude, CJ <laughs> CJ was in the broadcast booth and he was like, "Dude, I saw that happen one time, and the guy swung at it and it hit him square in the chest." And BG was yeah. like, oh, when you said square in, I thought you were going to say something else. <laughs> yeah. I was like, word. <laughs> I can't believe people are still complaining about this booth. And they said they wish they saw a Chip Carey. God, I yeah. fucking love when BG Chip left, CJ, I was, yeah. yeah. When Chip left, I was a little upset just like from the nostalgia factor because he's been calling games for a long time. And, you know, like his voice was kind of, you know, symbolic to Atlanta or whatever. And but like. After a weekend of having Brandon Gordon in there last year and Frenchie, oh man, I was like, oh, this is this is so much better. Yeah, um, CJ's uh, fitting in really good too. Frenchie is just up. celebrity spotting. He's been in there the past few days, but yeah, he's not full time anymore. But yeah, I love yeah. CJ, and of course when dude, and I think BJ and Frenchie have like such a cool connection where BG can kind of. I think I said BJ. I meant BG can kind of like. Just put everyone on the same yeah. plane, like level everybody out, kind of just like make everybody humble, right? Yeah. Like talk shit about their golf game or like what they ate <laughs> at the steakhouse last night or whatever and like make fun of people. And he can make I fun of himself it. too, which I think is yes. a yeah, yeah. very yeah, self-deprecating. self-deprecating. Yeah. Yeah. 
dude, honestly, because what I heard from my little brothers is that like, yo, that's the guy from Madden. And I was like, man, I haven't played Madden in a long time, but I need to like get, you know, a PS4 or a fucking Xbox 360 and get like Madden 2018 to listen to some BG commentary. Because apparently he was like the Madden commentary. He's the guy. voice of Madden. Yeah. I didn't know that until yeah. after we picked him up. Like, even the current Madden games? I don't I think so, that. no. I think it was like years ago. I don't know how long ago. Maybe it was as recent as two I, years ago, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm Googling it. Yeah. He's also yeah. called the um the block uh, field I, game against FSU, the Georgia Tech. Oh no shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that was probably a, that was Thursday night. That was probably on ABC, huh? Yeah, ESPN. Yeah, it was the ESPN night game. I think it was Saturday, yeah. a Saturday, but yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe it could, maybe it was ACC network. I, that I was know. a Thursday game, dude. That brought was it? that okay. blocked field goal. That was an ACC. Yeah, that was a ABC slash ESPN Thursday night under the lights at Bobby Dodd. Definitely I'm a pretty, night game. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. He, he definitely Thursday had the call. He definitely had the, the TV call. Hell yeah. Hundred percent. The miracle sure. yeah. on uh, North Ave, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it says in June 2016, it was announced that Godin would replace Jim Nance as the play-by-play voice of Madden. It doesn't have like a date and end date. He's still, he I think started he's still the 16. voice of Madden. Maybe he's still doing it. I mean, I can't imagine that's like a a difficult job, right? Like that's probably like a week in the booth, tops, two days. Here, so, here's yeah, all your lines. True. Read them. <laughs> Interesting topic because I heard a recent yeah he's like, in Madden 24 clips. Yeah. Okay, no shit. Wow. Yeah. But these games are getting more and more complicated, right? And I heard a recent interview, not from BG, but from uh, Kirk Herb Street. That was like, dude, you have to literally sit there for like weeks and like every single possible like blocked point oh, after shit. attempt, yeah. like blocked punt for like yeah. every single team. You know what I mean? Like. Oh, oh wow. shit. Southwest oh, wow. Louisiana State mud dogs, dude. Bobby Boucher <laughs> with the with the field goal block attempt. You That's know nice. I mean? Yeah. So That's but nice. he said he, you know, he said they're like getting paid handsomely. So it's like oh, oh I'm sure. Can, I'm sure. I, I thought like it would be like yeah. I thought it would be like a sentence template and then there'd be like a blank space where the team name is, and they just go say all the team names and then they can like interject them instead of having to say every sentence every time. I don't know. Well, and I think the point of the interview was it was like uh, it might have been on like the Pat McAfee show or so it might have been on um, a different one because he's like constantly on the Pat McAfee show. But they were like, dude, how do you do that? Is it like AI? And he's like, no, bro. I was in there like doing literal fucking voiceovers for every fucking possibility. Wow. He was like, he was like, yeah, hopefully it will be AI and they'll just like pay me to license my voice next year but like no dude like i made every like i was in a fucking vocal booth and like said it you know sometimes it's like one take sometimes it's like oh we need that again because we didn't get it or whatever it's like fuck dude (laughs) yeah but i'm sure they got paid like you said handsomely to spend a couple weeks in the booth doing that oh yeah dude trust me i'll definitely do that Something to keep Brandon Godden entertained in the off season, I suppose. Oh yeah. But um, all right, cool. So uh, looks like we got we got what three more games against the Mets, and then we're going to Miami this weekend. That should be fun. If Ronald doesn't wake up against the Mets, he will definitely wake up against the Marlins because he yeah. loves to punish the Marlins. Uh, yeah, when we fish. talk next week, we'll be uh, yeah, we'll be talking about how hot Ronald is all of a sudden. Yeah, and hopefully we'll have some good news about Strider too. That'd be sick. Fingers crossed. Maybe we'll get a good start out of Max on Thursday. Uh, get him kind of locked in, but he looked uh, good after the second inning on he Sunday. He did. He got into a little trouble in the fifth, but I mean, he got that perfect double play ball to Ozzy, and he, he kind of threw it away. I honestly think that was more of uh, Ozzy's fault than Max's. I feel like he should have caught that, but still, it wasn't a great throw. Yeah, but it's baseball. That, it happens. Yeah, is that dude the Marlins pitcher who always grooves one at? Ronald still there? No. Or did he get no. fired? He hasn't. He hasn't. The, yeah, he hasn't been with the Marlins in a hot minute. He's with someone else though. You know now. who I'm talking about? Yeah, right? Urania. 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 Yeah, fuck that guy. 
Um, yeah. yeah, fuck that guy. Is he, he still in the is, is he still in the show? He was in Colorado. He just signed He's with someone else. The Texas Rangers. Yeah. Supposedly. Did he get a ring last year or did he just sign this offseason? No, I think he just signed this offseason. I think he was with like Detroit last year or something. Sounds right. Yeah. He has pitched 3.1 innings with three strikeouts. I like Jazz Chisholm, though, man. I don't like Jazz. Yeah, I was going to say, Kevin, do you hit him? He's fine. I like, he's fine. He he just wants to be Ronald so bad. That's fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> can, can he's cool me. though. Like in his interviews, he's cool. I didn't think it was really that cool that he called out uh he basically called out uh Miguel Rojas without saying his name, but I don't know. He's just a young cocky kid and like I I can't like Ronald and not like Jazz, but I don't okay, know. Okay, see well, is that's he good? Why you say that I can't Jazz? that I can't yeah, is he actually like... good when he's healthy, he can barely say healthy. Bro, dude. Yeah, he's kind of been a Braves killer himself. Jazz, are you kidding me? He makes plays. He had a grand slam against us last year, I remember. I feel like we, we, maybe this is the different guy. I, like I, the I, old baseball reference page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel he's like good, he's one man. of these guys. He's like on the cover of the baseball. What is it? The show? And Yeah. I don't know. He's okay. like doesn't deserve it because he's too flashy and not like putting up numbers. He has a career 6.2 war, 244 batting average, 306 on base, 450 slug, 757 OPS, and a 103 OPS plus. Pretty mid. Isn't, isn't something pretty over 10 on OPS o- plus pretty good, though? 100, 100 is, average. is average. Yeah. No, above average. Just, a, just above, barely, just barely average. above average. To Not put it into perspective, Ronald Acuna Jr. is. Yeah, Ronald Acuna Jr.'s OPS plus Put it in is perspective of the MVP is one forty. That's his career OPS plus. Okay, 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 okay. See, so like Freddie Freeman is. this kid. I uh, just like his style, I guess. That's all. Yeah, I mean he's cool. He's a young kid. Yeah, he's got the uh, uh, dude. I saw him in a game. He had the uh, Jordan Elevens made into like cleats. He's he's like signed by the Jordan brand, and I know that doesn't mean anything against you know like it's not a real baseball thing but he's just got that swagger and that swag that's for sure i guess all i'm saying is well and he and he, and he does like make plays like he's he deserves he to be in the bigs you know what i'm saying for sure he saying, doesn't stop he's like but I mean, he just like he, yeah but he's like probably top half of the league at center field right yeah I with top so. half yeah yeah, he's he's gotten bad. a lot better this year too. I've seen a couple of web gems from him, made some good plays. He was struggling out there last year though. I just think he's, he's young. I don't have anything against him. How he's old? Is he? 26. Oh, he's, he's only 26. Yeah. Yeah, he's got time. I would have said he's actually like younger, 26. But I feel like he's fun. been in the I mean, league for a while. 26 is young for MLB though. I mean, like yeah. yeah, it takes people a lot to get up from the minors unless they're like a fucking superstar. Yeah, but Which last year the Braves have a bunch of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the most games he's ever played in his career was 124 in 2021. La- last year he played 97 and 22 he played 60 games. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Get, it, it's hard to get healthy. like sent down. Uh, what injuries? Injuries. Said, injuries get... Yeah. He's yeah, had a lot of getting sent down out of Miami. Like, yeah, no, they suck. Yeah. Man, Miami's management, they got rid of the Kim, who got them to the playoffs for the first time in who knows how long. Uh, yeah, what happened there? What? I, I don't think even uh, know. Derek I think, Jeter took partial ownership, and that's why they fucking I think he sucked, sold his it? share, didn't he? Oh, uh, did he? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a shit that's show. That's why they started to suck. Dude, remember when the fucking Marlins were like a Lopez franchise too. team and they won like two World Series and both times they just like offloaded their whole roster. That was Blockbuster guy who's still the owner then. That was the Florida Marlins. Now they're the Miami Marlins. And it's like, dude, what the fuck are y'all still just – you don't have like any leadership? Like what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of – I don't – oh, they didn't renew uh, Skip Schumacher's contract. He's, who was their manager last year? Who also got them to the playoffs for the first time, and who knows how yeah. long? Yeah. Oh, you did good. You're fired. 
Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You guys won a World Series, like we're going to trade you all. Like a That's major a league in real life, right? Like Modus yeah. operandi, dude. Good job. I remember. I think that was like Gary Sheffield's resting place, dude. I'm pretty sure they won a World Series when he was like, you know, on his last legs, and they won fucking there, won a World 97. Series. And they were like, all right, peace out. No, dude. he was young. He was young there. That team was stacked. That that team had Sheffield. Uh, the head team had Kevin Brown, Al Leiter. Um, who was playing? Was it? The team was loaded. I think Edgar Ringer like was some playing. Latinos, yeah. Talking about the 97. Yeah, the 97. Yeah, 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 yeah. Team was back. I think Alfonseca yeah. was in the pen. Rob Nen was in the pen, I believe. And they just sold everybody. But that team was pitching. loaded. Yeah, yeah, they were loaded. And it was like. Studio. I'm pretty sure they Bobby won Benilla. it all within yeah, like yeah, a few yeah. years of being a fucking expansion team. They won it, what was that, like 98? 97. Pretty sure. 97. Okay. Fucking Levon Hernandez they getting a strike zone like at the Atlantic Ocean. Dude. Weren't they? They won in like their third year. Their second or third year. 94. I think they came in with the Rockies. Yeah. Oh, damn. The Rockies were also the same year. And the Rockies made the, yeah. Fucking Levon Hernandez in that damn strike zone. You want to look up some videos? Go watch that. 97 NLDS. I remember Andres Galarraga. see that umpire scorecard. And he came from the Rockies <laughs> to the Braves. Dude, I remember I saw Andres Galarraga at like Lennox Mall one time. And like, God, it must have been 95 or 96. And all I remember is that, and it was just like right after, because he had like cancer. Yeah, and um, he came back and was making like a really cool, like national, you know, nationally known comeback from cancer, and was a like really famous, you know, ball player for the Braves. And me and my family, we were like at the mall, and I saw him in there, and all I remember is that he had calves, like calf muscles. Like his calves were like the size of my fucking head. I was like still a little, <laughs> little kid, you know. Yeah. I was probably like, I was probably like nine or ten actually. I wasn't like that small. A tiny, yeah, yeah. But like you know, up to like above his waist a little bit, and I just remember him walking around, and like it looked like these pants, like didn't quite fit him. You know what I'm saying? And I was, <laughs> and I looked at his legs, and I was like. Oh man, I don't know if they even make pants that fit this dude because this dude is like a cartoon character. He looks yeah. like <laughs> he, you know what I'm saying? He looks like yeah. the beast from Beauty and the Beast. Like he's got these, <laughs> like his calves are like the size of my head, bro. I yeah. was like, what the fuck? But he was super nice. He like leaned down and shook my hand, and I was like, are you Andres Calaraga? He was like, yeah. I didn't ask him for an autograph or anything, but. And this is when I still knew him from the Rockies, actually. And I was like, yo, you know, because when I was living in Kansas, I was like kind of a fan of him from being from the Rockies. This is like a year later, two years later, maybe. Anyway, whatever. Super nice guy, man. Awesome comeback story. Braves legend, dude. Andres, yeah, big sure. cat, Galarraga, bro. Back in the day. A plus guy. <laughs> at least in my yeah. in my experience i don't know yeah we were outside of like a toy store it wasn't like an fao schwarz it was like right above the main entrance where you would used to go past nike town one floor up and to the right if anyone remembers what store that was it was a bunch of like little magic you know fucking i don't know Trinket stores, yeah. Yeah, a little trinket store like that, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, um, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Uh, I do got to go to bed here soon because we were filming this uh, kind of late here on a uh, Monday evening after that uh, game one against the Mets. Um, but yeah, so we we plan on doing this what like once a week. Um, we might have some other short little videos that happen during the week. We'll probably take some little clips out of this and share them on socials and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Braves are good. The Braves are good at baseball. 
Um, yeah. Don't you get it, baseball, baby? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> any, any other <laughs> key takeaways that you guys have? Or anything you want to say? Nah, looking forward to doing this with you guys, though. Should be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. Stay yep. tuned. We talk and chat, baby. Yes, yeah, sir. All right, y'all. Well, uh, be sure to uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, yeah. Peace. See ya. Hasta luego.